Hello fellow Zumba instructors and welcome to my channel. My name is Mini and today I would like to share with you the 10 tips that I would give to a new Zumba instructor and that I would have loved to receive when I started my journey as a Zumba instructor. Let's go! 1. Attend a Zumba Pro Skills training. I know you already did your Zumba B1 basics training. See it this way. The basics training teaches you the what. You learn the Zumba formula, the basic rhythms, the steps, the variations, how to structure your playlist. In a pro skills training, you learn the how. You're going to learn different cueing techniques and how to alternate them. But I'm an expert dancer and I already spent so much money in the B1 training. And now you tell me that I have to do the pro skills training too? If it was so essential, they would have taught those notions in the basics training. Uh, no. <laughs> in my opinion, especially if you're an expert dancer, you should consider doing the pro skills training because most certainly all the steps look easy to you right now. And that doesn't help the beginners that will come to your class without any kind of dancing background whatsoever. So the more you learn how to guide them, to break down the steps and to balance the educator and the performer in you, the better and more complete instructor you'll become. Also, the B1 training is already a full-on course. It's packed with content. So they probably decided to leave the skills that you learn at a ProSkills training to a separate session. You don't have to do it straight after your basics training. But what I'm saying is, when you can, invest on it. Two, remember their names. Okay, let me tell you my story. At the beginning of my career, when I was getting the first permanent classes, I didn't know any of the participants' names. And because I come from Italy, I wasn't used to all the diverse names that we find here in Australia. Irish, Indian, Chinese names that are beautiful, but that I'd never heard before. And I hate being that person that keeps asking, what was your name again? To the same people over and over again. That's embarrassing and it makes me feel old. So what I did was creating a note on my phone for each of my classes. Then I would arrive 10 minutes earlier and go to each participant, introduce myself and ask their name and how to spell it. I would write down all the names, sometimes with key elements like blonde lady or mother and daughter. Will they look at you like you're a crazy weirdo? Yes. But the next time when you show that you remembered their name, they will be so surprised and they will love the fact that you want to know who they are and you're not treating them like numbers. Try and let me know in the comments below if this tip worked for you. Three, don't judge other instructors. Phew, this one is going to be controversial. So much drama. Let's keep this one between us. Actually, you know what? Give to this video a like so I know that we trust each other and we can talk about this. I'll wait. Now that we are friends, let's have a chat. I've seen Zumba instructors who don't put Latin music in their playlist. Oh, I don't like salsa and all that stuff. So normally I just teach one or two reggaeton and then I fill my playlist with hip hop and funky. I've seen instructors doing core exercises on the floor during a Zumba class. I've also seen Zumba instructors using normal weights during the classes because I also teach Zumba toning, so it's okay if I mix a bit of everything. Just move on. You do you. Don't bother giving other instructors your feedback. Sometimes they won't accept your positive criticism even if they specifically asked for it. So forget about sharing your opinion with those who didn't ask for it. Unless they're doing something illegal or unethical, like teaching Zumba without a Zumba license or a current Zine membership, in which case you might politely point out that they're doing something wrong, don't get into arguments, gossip, drama. You don't need that. That's not our style. 
Zumba instructors are a community that supports and values each instructor's unique personality. Focus on what you can give to your Zumba tribe. Everything else doesn't matter. Four, be punctual. Actually, no, be early. When I was a participant, I remember seeing a few Zumba instructors rushing, like literally running into the class the very last minute, just before starting with a frowny face. I know that from their point of view, they had that expression because they were feeling guilty of being so late. But from the participant's point of view, the message you're giving is, gosh, this is stressful, I don't want to be here, let's just get over with it. That's not why they're attending your Zumba class. If they wanted a painful vibe, they would have probably signed up for a martial training in the style of Kill Bill. They come to Zumba because of the positive vibes, because of the great music, because it doesn't feel like a workout or a chore, because it makes them feel happy and helps them forget their troubles. They come for you. And the least you could do for them is being early. Plus, there are benefits of being early for your Zumba classes. The first one that I just mentioned is that you show them that you are looking forward for the class too. So you start creating the positive vibes of a party. The second benefit is that you can connect with your participants and answer any questions they might have. The third benefit is that you might sell your class to random gym members. This really happened to me. I was outside the group fitness studio with my Zumba peeps waiting for the other class to finish and as a lady close by was staring at us, I said, don't worry, we're just here for Zumba. Have you ever done Zumba? I wasn't pushy, just enthusiastic. And when she said, no, I've never done it, how is it? I briefly described Zumba and said, you should try it. Guess what? The week after, she showed up to do the class and she loved it. These are all opportunities that you lose if you don't commit to arrive 5-10 minutes earlier. 5. Be clear with your movements and break down the steps every time. You are an amazing dancer and you have amazing moves and we're all very happy for you. But the class is not about you, it's about them. Some of them might remember the steps, some others will have to watch you every time. Some others are beginners and have never seen your choreographies before. You will have to cue every single time. Show them clearly where they have to go. Front, diagonal, side, back. Break down the steps at the beginning of the song and if you see that they are confident about the steps, then, and only then, you can go free and dance and move and ba 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 da do 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 Six, cue bigger. Imagine this, if every member in front of you had a laser pointed at your cueing, would it be able to reach you? The more people you have in your class, the bigger your cueing has to be. The bigger the crowd, the more you won't just use your hands, but the whole arm starting with the shoulder. You can also combine visual cueing with body cueing. The point is, don't be afraid of expanding your comfort zone and use as much space as you need. 7. Film yourself. No, not for socials, that's not what I mean. Sure, if you want to post parts of your choreographies to promote yourself, go for it. But what I'm telling you is something different. Especially at the beginning, when you're preparing your very first playlist, it's fundamental that at home you record yourself teaching the whole playlist and watch it from the beginning to the end. I know that it's boring, but believe me, you're going to find so many things that you can do better parts where you should improve your cueing because it's not clear, or steps that you might have to change because they're too hard to do. You can see if the songs flow nicely. You can assess if the class has the right intensity. At this point, I would love to ask you to subscribe to my channel. We're getting along quite well because you're still watching this video. So my promise to you is that I will post many more useful videos and if you subscribe and hit that notification bell, 
you won't miss any. Eight, don't take it personal. You can be the best Zumba instructor on the planet. You could even be better than Beto Perez, the founder of Zumba. The truth is, there will be people who don't like your class. There will be people who live in the middle of it without saying a word, or that don't come regularly every week. There might be people who text on their phone during the class, and people who won't show up when you cover for another instructor. And this is normal. Don't get offended, please. And don't make assumptions. You don't know what's happening in their lives. There might be an emergency at home, and that's why they stopped for a minute to send a message or get a call. They might have just broken up with their boyfriend and that song is a big trigger for them and they will suddenly leave the class so they don't cry in front of the others. Some members will come with their friend for the first time and they will start giggling and messing around. It might be that they are so nervous and shy that they react that way. Most of the times, they don't mean to disrespect you or bother you. Probably, they are not even aware that you have noticed them and that their behavior really bothers you. If you see that someone is repeatedly disrupting the class somehow multiple times, then go talk to them. But consider that in 99% of the cases, their behavior reflects yours. If you come to the class early, create genuine connections with them and treat them with respect and empathy. They will be the first ones to come to you and apologize for being late or texting during the class. What you give is what you get. It's the circle, the circle of Zumba. <laughs> Nine, new members are your priority. Yes, your Zumba tribe is amazing. Your front row divas support you so much. But you should always acknowledge and keep an eye on new members. You see, many times old members stop coming for several reasons. They move to a different area or they get another job and the new schedule doesn't allow them to come to your classes anymore. Or they start a family or they develop medical conditions that preclude them to do Zumba. So it's very important that you retain new members. And the secret here is consistency. Introduce yourself, break down the steps, check if they can see you and follow you. Make yourself available to answer their questions and make them feel part of your Zumba squad. Which brings me to the final tip. 10. Create an inclusive environment. I am going to do a video just about this and I will link it here and in my description box because there's so much to say about the different types of instructors that we can be and how these result in different vibes in our classes. For now, just remember that every person that will come to your classes is a unique individual with their own dreams, backgrounds, needs, troubles. With Zumba, you have the chance to enrich and empower every single one of them. That's our job, to welcome, not to showcase, to lead, not to impress. Paraphrasing the words of a famous politician, don't ask yourself what your class can do for you. Ask yourself what you can do for them. I really hope that this video was helpful. There will be many more to come. Thank you for your time and I will see you soon. Ciao. Hello fellow Zumba instructors and welcome that I have to do the, the pro skills trending path. Ciao. Unless they're doing something illegal or not legal. But their whole arm starting from the shoulders. If I don't touch the microphone, it's even better. Especially at the beginning, when you're preparing your very 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 raw, you could even be better than better better Break down the step. Break down the step. Ancora?